When it comes to Motorola, I've always had a soft spot for their phones. And I think that's because one of my first ever Android phones was the Motorola Droid from Verizon. This was the very first Droid in the Droid series that Verizon offered. So it was kind of a groundbreaking phone. Now looking back at it, it was really nothing fancy. It was a very boxy phone, had a slide out keyboard, but at the time had a great display and mediocre camera. But the fact that it ran Android and it was the first Droid series phone from Verizon really made it stand out. Fast forward to today and we have tons of different Motorola phones. And I think my favorite was the Moto X because it showed you that specs didn't mean everything. It was all about software and optimization. And I love the customization that Motorola included with the Moto X and plus the price point was outstanding. Well. I just got back from a Motorola event in Chicago where they unveiled a new phone and a new mod and I'm going to tell you all about that new device and despite what you might have heard about it from other reviewers, I'm going to tell you why it's important and why it's actually a great phone. But first, we got to roll the sponsor. W-A-R-E. Silverware. Tupperware. Hardware. Colorware. Be unique. Express yourself. Let Colorware show you how. If you don't do it for your phone, do it for yourself. The first thing I want to do is talk about the event. The event was amazing. We actually had the event in Chicago at their headquarters and we got to walk through and we got to see what goes into 5G. We got to see like about the technology itself, what it's capable of, what it's not capable of, and how they plan on implementing it. Now Motorola teamed up with Verizon to do this presentation and it was pretty sweet. Then we headed upstairs, we had some food, had some drinks, and we got some hands on with the new phone. And then we headed over to Wrigley Stadium and we watched a Cubs game in a suite. And I gotta say, it was sweet. Now let's talk about the products. The first one was a 5G mod. Basically, Motorola has taken all of the tech needed to give you 5G data speeds and crammed it into a mod that also has a built-in 2000 milliamp hour battery. It's pretty groundbreaking, especially when they kind of hinted at it being backwards compatible. So if you have like a Z2 Play or a Z2 Force, technically this mod should work, hopefully. We'll have to see in the future. Now here's the thing. This is not going to be available until next year, but then again, 5G really isn't going to be deployed until next year. The second product they unveiled was the Moto Z3, and this is what I want to talk to you guys about in a little bit more detail. The Moto Z3 is a budget style phone that a lot of people just weren't really impressed with. And I can honestly say I fell into that category at first, but after I gave it some thought, I really think this phone has its place and it's a great phone for that specific person. It features a Snapdragon 835 and four gigabytes of RAM and the exact same design as the Z3 Play. It has a 3000 milliamp hour battery, but you don't get the battery mod in the box like you do with the Z3 Play. Now the specs alone are enough to steer someone away, but you gotta think about it like this. This is the first time that Motorola has used dated specs to give you a phone that offers a great experience. Think about the Moto X. So the Z3 actually supports all of the older Moto mods as well. And this is also for the Z3 Play. So if you wanted to save some money, you could always buy like a Moto mod that came out with the Z2 Force or the Z2 Play and use it with the Z3, such as the turbo battery pack, which I absolutely love because of the rubber texture on the back. Plus it just works great. But in the end, no matter how good an accessory is or a mod is, it's not going to sell a phone single-handedly. You gotta have the full package. And I think that's where Motorola went wrong with the Z2 Force. Incredible phone, excellent phone. In fact, it was one of my favorite phones of 2017. It was just really, really expensive when it first came out and it just wasn't worth the asking price. And I think that's where the Z3 really shines. And that brings me to my point. Does the Z3 have a place in 2018? And the answer is yes. Yes, it does. The reason being is if you're on Verizon and you wanna jump on board that OnePlus train, you really can't do it. I mean, you can, but you're not gonna get the full OnePlus experience because of network compatibility issues. More so, if you want a stock Android experience, really you're limited down to what, a Pixel 2 or Pixel 2 XL? I mean, you could go with the original Pixel, but that is a pretty dated phone. And the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL are pretty pricey phones. 
that leaves the Moto Z3. You're pretty much gonna get a stock Android experience for 480 bucks. It does have a Snapdragon 835 and it does have a 1080p display and only four gigs of RAM and a 3000 milliamp hour battery, but all of those things are still enough to get you by. The Moto Z3 reminds me so much of the original Moto X. You see, it's not giving you the greatest specs, but it's gonna give you a wonderful experience and enough performance to get you through your daily task. Now, where the Moto X had the customization options, the Moto Z3 has the modular system. So in a way, it's almost like Motorola went back to their original roots when they started the Moto X lineup. Another thing to keep in mind is when the Moto X was super popular, that was when the OnePlus One was first announced. And I remember putting those phones head to head against each other. And honestly, it was really tough picking a winner. And I feel like that just continues with the OnePlus 6 and of course the Moto Z3. Now, if you're not on Verizon, the OnePlus 6 is obviously a better phone all around, but if you're on Verizon, that's where the Moto Z3 actually has its place in 2016. Of course, I do have more Moto Z3 content planned, but if there's anything in specific you wanna see, like a certain comparison or something that you want mentioned or looked at in the full review, make sure you leave it down below in a comment. Also, without any influence from myself or anybody else, let me know what do you think of this phone? What are your expectations? Do you plan on looking at it or picking one up? I wanna know down below in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video and my personal thoughts, make sure you drop it a like. If you didn't, well, you should still drop it a like. If you're new here, stick around by subscribing. And if you're not new here, make sure you turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when new content drops. And of course, I'll talk to you guys in the next one.